is who are you and why do you do what you do? I am Yvonne Goldsberry, and right now I'm honored to serve as president of the Endowment for Health. And I've been in healthcare for over 35 years, so it's a little bit hard to say why I do what I do, but I'm really inspired right now to do the work that I do, given that um, we're in this difficult time with COVID and um, its disparate impact that it has on our communities. So now more than ever is a time to be working in healthcare. And how did you become involved? So I have been doing this, like I said, for 35 years. And if I think back uh, to the first time that I really felt like I um, understood and was on the ground with healthcare, I worked as a community organizer in the South Bronx. And believe it or not, we were doing building-based um, lead paint abatement work way back in the mid 80s. And it's hard for me to watch now to see some of those issues still be present in Manchester. But I worked on the streets and I brought together a group called the Community Health Watch Council that uh, identified health needs in their neighborhood. And that back then, that was like way ahead of the time for the kind of organizing that we see today. But that's where I really learned about healthcare on the ground. We worked hard to get a primary care clinic brought to that community. And it's funny because every once in a while now I'll drive down that street and I go, oh, my clinic is still there. So so since you do this work, how can others get involved in what you're doing? So I think there's lots of ways to get involved, whether it's in New Hampshire or elsewhere in the nation. Um, right now, there's a, it's a critical point in time where we're having this conversation about who deserves health care and who doesn't. And there are lots of engaged organizations here in New Hampshire. There are advocates working on the ground talking about the Affordable Care Act. Um, there's the new governor's equity task force that made this great report that's focused on our communities. So there are lots and lots of ways to get involved. And finally, what message do you want to leave with the future generations? So here's the thing. I think that you now have digital tools and things that weren't available when I was a community organizer that makes some of the work a lot easier on some hands, and on the other hand, it makes it harder. So I'm really, really inspired by all the new voices that are engaged in Black Lives Matter and all the other sort of street level work. But the key is that's focused on issues of today. And we've got to think about how do we translate that into the long haul so that it sustains over the future? The other thing I'd say is that it really doesn't matter if you jump into this as a leader or a supporter, you just got to do something. And what I'd say, if anybody tries to tell you that you can't, you got to find a way to prove that you can. Just get involved somehow. Most importantly, you need to vote. If you're old enough to vote, you need to get out there and vote. Super, super important right now in this particular election. Any last comments that you want to give? Well, I think, again, I can't under, underestimate the need to vote. So voting, 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 voting. But... For today, for this conference, thank you for being here. And I'm really excited by the work of Jerry Ann and the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire. Um, and this particular topic is more important than ever because Black women really do rock.